So, here's a question for your brain. Do you know what megafauna is? Well, in case you don't, it's a classification of an animal which is over 100 kilograms in weight. Well, in mammals anyway, which would be fine for our purposes today. Right on your screen is a graph showing how many different species of megafauna herbivore and carnivore there were during the Pliocene compared to today. Now, if you've got eyes, you may notice there's a significant decrease, which results in two questions. What were these animals? And where did all the megafauna go? Today, I'll look specifically at Europe, and then I'll begin to move my way around the world until we find out what happened on all of these continents. So, to set the scene, it's the late Pliocene. So, in terms of time, we're talking around 129,000 years ago to 11,000 years ago. For our purposes, we're looking at the time frame surrounding those 11,000 years ago. In Europe, the environment is basically a savanna, with Europe having its own homegrown fillings for those found in modern Africa, such as various species of elephant, including the mammoth, Irish elk, various species of hyena, and cave lions, to name but a few. There's also evidence of crocodiles inhabiting parts of southern Europe at this time, all of this showing that Europe was quite warm during this period. So what happened? Well, there's a few reasons scientists have put forward. The current, most widespread and accepted theory is the end of the warm climate, which had preceded the late Pliocene. The reason for this? Well, big glaciers were coming down from the Arctic. As a result, many megafauna animals were trapped by geography. Because, if you want to get to Italy, you've got to get through the Alps, which many animals couldn't do. To get into Spain, you've got to get through the Pyrenees. And to get to the rest of southern Europe, you have to go through the Balkans. All of which, in terms of terrain, wasn't ideal for many of these megafauna animals. And as they were unable to adapt to the new climate, many of them would perish. But there have also been theories suggesting disease would have played a role. And it should be pointed out that this time, humans had made their way into Europe and likely had a massive effect on megafauna populations as they would have been killed for both their furs, their ivory, and their meat in order to sustain, clove, and tool the various family units. All of this means that in the modern day, we're down to just a few. There is only a handful of megafauna left in Europe, with many of the biggest, with many of the larger animals having their ranges significantly reduced. All of this has negatively affected Europe's biodiversity, as well as the health of its ecosystem. That is why in recent years there have been projects aimed at redevelop at reintroducing megafauna back into Europe. Join us next time as we go to the land down under and the surrounding areas to figure out why it completely lost all of its megafauna. I'll see you in the next one.